All righty, folks, it is the beginning of 2024, and Casey and I would be remiss if we didn't step back and say, you know what? If somebody reached out to us, maybe a family member over the holidays, a friend that's reconnecting on social media was asking us, hey, I want to do what you did, but I got to start today. What would be some advice? I thought Casey and I could go back and forth maybe two or three times in what I call the game of ping pong. So Casey, friend and family, reached out to you on the holidays, says, I love what you're doing with Brick by Brick Wealth. I love the real estate portfolio, the passive income you have. I want to start today. What would your first piece of advice be? Piece of advice, my first question would be, what's your financial situation? What are mm -hmm. you capable of? How much money do you have saved? Where do you have money you can pull from? 401k, equity in your home. Do you have other assets, brokerage accounts? Um, what? How much money do you make in a month? What's your savings rate? You know, I would ask all those questions to get an idea because like I have students that will say, I have $30,000 and that's it. And then mm. I have students that say, I have a million dollars. And it's like, mm. in a bank account, what are you doing? You know, then I, I'm yeah. doing this one. Um, so, but those people will be completely different real estate markets doing completely different things. So first question would be, where are you at with your finances? That's funny because my first one has evolved over time. It's it's really a finance oriented one. To me, I kind of spin it slightly different. I want people to understand that you really can only go down this path with something that's called discretionary income. Yes, you know how much you make. Yes, you know how much you net. But very, very few people understand how much truly discretionary income they have at the end of the month. And if you believe the numbers that financial institutions publish, some of us have negative discretionary. What the hell does that mean? That means you are living on credit cards. You have no disposable income. So for some people, you need to focus on your financial house, pay off those 20% credit cards, uh, go you know, go get a second job, third, whatever it is. You need discretionary income. You can't do what Casey and I did without it. It was so important in your story. You created an Etsy store to become That's that right. source for discretionary income. So there are That's ways right. to do it, but it starts with discretionary income. All right. What do you got for advice number two? So second thing is, once I have an idea of where their financial situation is, right? And if they do have too many debts, I say, come back later. Like you're yeah. not financially ready. You know, you've yeah. got to get yourself in order first, get your FICO score up have a healthy savings amount, be able to live on less than you make, then you can talk about investing. And to me, investing is more of a privilege. It's not a right. You don't have a right to invest. It's a privilege because you've done things the right way. You're in a good spot financially. You've earned the right to invest your hard-earned money. So, okay, that out of the way. The second thing I would say is, are there real estate opportunities near where you live? Because my opinion would be, Usually the easiest thing is for people to start off with a single family or small multifamily, whether it's like a house hacking situation or buying a house. Some people do live in California or I don't know where in, in you know, New York City, and they're not going to be buying investments near them, you know. And most newbies aren't starting off buying a starting a syndication or buying a 20 unit complex. So you're starting small. So can you buy in your backyard or not? Yeah, my second one in this goes back to the very beginning when I was speaking in 2018 after leaving my W-2 is I, I want to try to figure out their why. And I say that because a lot of people I talk to, I call shooting stars. They come in all excited. You could almost see them vibrating. This is going to be the path to their future. They're convinced that this is how they get out of the rat race. And it's almost like you could see dollar signs in their eyes. My experience with that type of person is frankly, they're just going to waste my time. They're going to come in, they're going to make all kinds of noise for 30 or 45 days, and then they're going to disappear and they'll be off to something else. So what I would tell a friend or a family is if I saw that in them, I would tell them that day one. If they were family, I might challenge them to read a book, which I anticipate they won't read. Uh, and then I kind of let them go nicely. But I got to tell you, I'm getting really old and tired of shooting stars. And if you're chasing this quick money thing, real estate's not quick money. It's not the easy button. No. It uh, it takes a decade. And if I get the feeling you're in this for 10 minutes, I'm going to find a way to exit that conversation pretty quickly. 
Yeah, I'll say a lot of times um, in Instagram, I'll be chatting with people in the DMs and a couple of popular things are, well, I hear I can buy real estate with, you know, no credit, no money down. I want to do the Burr method. I'm just like, oh, come on, you know? So that's one. And it's like starting off, no, Burr is an advanced strategy, in my opinion, or you really need to have someone literally by your side to help you the whole time. Huge risk. I hear that or I hear... I want to do Airbnb arbitrage. Yeah. I want to, I'm just like, because you don't have money to own anything, but you see, you want to borrow somebody, something else. And you want to start a whole business off a lease agreement that the, the owner can just cancel, you know, when the year's up and not renew, but you built a following and you built reviews and you got furniture for this specific space. And now it's got to go. Like to me, I mean, it's great. People make tons of money to arbitrage, but I'm, I'm with you. And that's, Kind of pie in the sky takes a lot of work. That's not going to work for everybody, and it's not as it's it's not true investing in my opinion. That's just creating another day job. You're not owning anything. You're just borrowing somebody something and making get, getting yourself a new job. So it's like I hear both of those things a lot, and I'm like, you know, yeah. what I do is not going to be for you because I require you to actually get in the game, to actually have your crap in order, and be ready and willing to do the work. You know, so uh, those those are the two things that I hear a lot that I'm just always shaking my head at. Because like, again, like, let's not shoot for the stars. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to help you shoot for the stars like that. Like, yeah, absolutely. I'm only going to help you with what I know you can do, not yeah. what maybe you can do if you find private money. Like, don't waste my time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, let's do one final one. What is your third piece of advice for that family member that comes to you and says, "Hey, I want to do what you did." I would say, what's your risk level? Mm. Because your risk level will determine the type of real estate investment that you do. And for some people, they're okay buying houses in Detroit, you know, $20,000 houses and putting 30 into them and you're repeating it every five years, which they don't realize. You know, some people are high risk. Some people are like, I want to, I want to really like to own a primary or I, I, I want a house hack and I, I'm very low risk. And I'd like to buy something near me. So the risk level to me will also tell what type of investment you're willing to do. So if I could get a picture of the finances, um, their risk level, whether they have opportunity near near them, that could kind of help me understand what type of property and maybe where they would be comfortable to invest in and actually be willing to move forward doing it. Because some people want would be amazing at doing short-term rentals at the beach. You know, yeah. that's their comfort level. They have the income for that. It will make them good money and they have the time to do it. That's a completely different person than someone who's, you know, can only afford an $80,000 single family out of state and it has to be rent ready with no repairs. So yeah. I feel like I would need to have all that information before I could yeah. kind of help guide them on what their choices are. I think the last thing I would advise someone, again, a family member is, um, especially if they didn't own their home, was there's a lot of value in getting on the property ladder, ladder uh, with a primary, uh, lowest oh, yeah. down payment. Uh, there are programs. Uh, there's a 203K loan. Uh, mm -hmm. You can now get into a fourplex with 5% down with some new FHA rules and regulations. Now, of course, it isn't right for everyone. Uh, but again, if I'm thinking about the family members that I'd be speaking with, they're generally a decade or two younger than me. And I would just remind them that there's a lot you can do with a with a primary. For example, uh, one of the things that very few people know is if you move into a primary, you live there for two years and you sell it, you can take the gains tax-free. Yep. One of my greatest aha moments occurred probably 15 years ago when Olivia and I were traveling on a cruise. One of the couples we bounced, bounced into, uh, all they do is buy expensive homes in Southern California as a primary, live in them for two years as they fix it up, then they sell it because they are married. They can take 500 grand tax-free. And this is not a one and done. You could do this over and over. And that's what they've done for almost two decades. Wow. You know, uh, 203K loan. My second book, 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. Meet Kevin story is in there because he talks about saving nine grand at Jamba Juice and doing a 203K loan for him and Lauren before they had kids. There's so many ways you can get started with a, a, a primary. Um, you don't have to start with a rental property, right? Um, so that's probably something I would I would have a conversation with, with uh, friends or family. Uh, 
But Casey, at the end of the day, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. At the end of the day, I was going to say, wrap us up and tell people where they can find you. All right. I'll say one last quick thing. When it comes to primaries, for many people, we don't have a fortune teller for the rest of our lives. And Mm -hmm. for many people, your primary is going to be your biggest savings account. You never know what financial problems may hit your family, a crisis, who knows? And many people, it gives the goosebumps, rely on the equity in their homes in retirement. So Mm -hmm. if anything, yes, get a primary. And do I think a primary is an investment? Yes, I do. And then there's debate on that. But I absolutely Mm -hmm. think that owning a home and gaining equity is something very important to do. All right. Where you can find me? Brick by Brick Wealth on Instagram, on YouTube. Guys, give me a follow on YouTube. My channel's starting back up. I've got all my decorations coming. So I'm really excited. There you go. And don't forget, she will be in Vegas. If you're one of the 300 plus people coming, uh, Casey will be there. And if you buy the virtual ticket, uh, you can, I forget what time you're speaking, but I do have the agenda, which you can go find it and interact with Casey at the event. Thank you.